doggos and depressives, and welcome back to the Boss Designs of Dark Souls. If you remember last time, we killed a dog. We fought Sif, the Great Grey Wolf, and then we were sad for a very long time. We were sad and didn't enjoy the world anymore, and everything was bad and terrible, but we have to move on <laughs> from the poor doggo that we killed and look for more bosses to kill, who will hopefully be somewhat less heartbreaking. And uh, to that end, I have teleported us to Anor Londo. And right now, having run out of other options and things to explore, I feel like it is finally time to check what the heck is behind that golden door that uh, got opened when we put the Lord Vessel down. Ah, uh, yes, the door is open. And this place also... Uh, is that a boar? I haven't fought one of those in a long time. Well, this is going great. Yeah. <laughs> that was... That was somewhat predictable. You know, I'd been feeling kind of good <laughs> about how I had gotten much stronger. So much stronger since the last time I was in... I was... I, like, I was... Since the start of the game. Like, I can take on anything now. I can kill giants and big guys and knights and stuff like that. I would never be taken down by an enemy from the early game. And there's the boar! <laughs> to remind me that Dark Souls still thinks I'm weak. <laughs> and it's right. It's not like it's wrong. This is the only thing I can think to do. Yeah. And I still absolutely cannot do any damage to him. Oh, I can't backstab him. He's got... He's got butt protection. Well, then there's really nothing for it, is there? Oh, you have got to be shitting me. What the hell am I supposed to do about that? I mean, I guess... Yeah, this could take a while. There we go. Now I'm doing damage. God, please don't respawn. Please never respawn. Severed head of the fully armored fang boar, taken by the one who killed it as proof of his victory, just as the gods once did with the head of the ancient dragon, can be worn on the head as a surprisingly sound piece of protective gear. <laughs> <laughs> that looks very dumb. What the... Oh, hi. Oh, they hit a little hard, don't they? Oh, Jesus Christ. They hit pretty hard. Okay. So that's just like a... Frick ton of crystal guys. Crystal hollows? Were they hollows? They kind of seemed like it. They seemed like they shared some of the animation. Good. Okay. The great axe can deal with them. Broken pendant. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you to die. Thank you. Oh, sh Yahoo! there's something else we can do in Anor Londo that I completely forgot about. The painting thing. We got that... We got that doll that had the text about the painting. So this is a lovely library, by the way. I wish you could read some of those books. That might be interesting. Aw, you thought you were clever. Okay, what's gonna kill us on level two? Or three, as the case may be. A lot of crystal here. Let's see. Oh! Oh, you look bigger than your other buddies! It's like a crystal person! Oh! Wow, wow, that does not look pretty. That looks really unpleasant, actually. You! No! 
Oh, they had things. Twinkling Titanite, the last one had. I wanted it. Oh, well. Maybe it'll be back. Oh. Uh, is there a boss on the other side of this? Because that would be a little soon. Oh, good grief. Okay. Please, no boss. Oh, sh- No! That's one of the four lords! How do I even get to him? Oh, Jesus! Help! Help! Well, okay. Wait, what? I didn't... That's not the bonfire I was... That's a new... So, I have to take it that either this is a really weird bug or else this was supposed to happen. Like, it was a... Because I couldn't see any way to get to the guy. <laughs> Lol. Oh! Uh, so... Exactly how the hell I was supposed to attack him, I couldn't figure out. that bad? I don't know what that is and I don't like it! They're being controlled by the music. Oh god damn it. Can I not go back in the cell? Wait, they're running away. Oi! You! Oh, they're coming. They're coming. Okay, I see why you're running. Those things, whatever they are, probably bad. Probably bad. Okay. I hope they can't climb ladders? What the hell is going on here? I mean, the lizard men were scared. But I can't go through that door. And I have the master key, so it's not like... I guess... I have to go down? By the way, I figured out you can slide. That's something I figured out a few days ago. <laughs> okay, you, whatever the hell you are, you. Stop coming after me! They have grab attacks. Okay. No! Oh! Ah! Help! Please die! <laughs> uh, bad touch. Very bad touch. So Seath the Scaleless was just hanging out here, I guess. He was just... He was just here. Or wherever the hell this is. Okay, this is creepy. This is very creepy. There aren't any more of them, right? Oh, God. Yes, there is. Oh, there's lots more. There's a lot more. Okay. What are those? Are those mind flares? What the hell? Hello. Hi.
I've got a uh, position open for a three o'clock stabbing. Only one person at a time, though. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Are they asleep? I'll wake him up. What? Those have a lot more health, though. And they aren't hostile? Why aren't they attacking? Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's a ladder. Because I definitely... I, if they're not hostile, I don't want to kill them. Ah, it's got snakes. Eh. Jerks. They don't even give more souls than the one in Sen's Fortress. Okay, that's enough. Your Spotify playlist sucks. There we go. That's a way out. Hello again. What, what the hell are you doing here? Alas, I'm imprisoned once again. I don't suppose you could stage me a getaway. The archives. Such a storehouse of knowledge. So close, but just out of reach. The thought offends me, so I could simply die. As a student of the arts, you understand me, hmm? I'd be happy to help, but I don't have the key. Hmm... Okay, so I feel like I screwed up by hitting those two. Poor girls, or things. But since they're not hostile, we can get a good look at them. So they've got that spike. Hi. Yeah, I know, I know. Could you chill just for a sec? Because I just want to look... Yeah, I mean, we, I think of them as humanoid, but there's really nothing human about them. The thing that makes them identify as humanoid in terms of a character design is the fact that their tentacles fall down, drape over their head like uh, hair. And that's the thing that makes them look humanoid, and that's also the thing that gives them perhaps a somewhat... Feminine expression because we are usually associate long hair with femininity that and of course the snake and the whole Lamia thing which is typical of uh, Of like Naga creatures and stuff like that which are identified as female usually But yeah, if I mean the only thing we know about Seath so far Or rather the thing we talked about when we fought the moonlight butterfly way the heck back when we found on it a little bit of a, like, we, we discussed the Moonlight Butterfly in terms of a constructed being. Like, it's, it seemed to be a creature that had been put together, that had been engineered, that had been made like a thing. And it had this fusion of artificial and natural parts. And it apparently was, if I don't remember too wrongly, it was uh, engineered by Seath the Scaleless himself, who apparently has a bit of a penchant for creating creatures, and now that I see these snake people here, alongside these poor tentacle creatures, whatever the heck they are, I can't help but think... Where the hell am I? I can't help but think that maybe what we've got in Seath the Scaleless is a bit of a tinkerer, a bit of a mad scientist kind of character. Because uh, that's the thing, I, I, in terms of the iconography he imbued in the Moonlight Butterfly, was an iconography of... Oh, wait, there's no point going to the bonfire. Um, an iconography that implies that he thinks of himself as divinity, of, as, that he thought of himself as creating angels. Which is a profoundly arrogant position, like a, a, a position of someone who's sort of trying to play God, as it were. And I wonder if that applies to the creature itself. This is up on the... That tower on the hill, I think. The one far up above where we were. I did not see any of those crystal structures last time I looked at that, though. Nope! I think the hell not. What does this do? 
Oh, that makes me invulnerable for a second. Oh, good grief. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Fire. Thank you. Dumbass. Okay. God, it's quiet here. It's all so quiet. It's old, so still. Right, so what then? It's like, it's not like I want to go down. I am bad at navigation. Just kill me with a boss, Dark Souls. Don't kill me out of embarrassment that I can't find my way around. It's like theoretic. Oh, I can just jump down from here. Ah. Uh, I could just drop down. I could just use gravity. Oh, that's a fog door. Is it? No, that's just outside, I think. I hope. Almost out of Estes. That's great. Bonfire, 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 bonfire. Oh. Well, that works. <laughs> <laughs> right, so where the hell were we? Last time I remember, I got profoundly confused by the layout of this place and managed to walk in a complete circle and kind of make a, make a fool out of myself, which is par for the course for these videos, really. Okay, there's a doorway over there with a lamp in it calling attention to itself. Let's go say hi. A jackass I can't reach. That's what's there. Okay. Well, upgrading my pyromancy flame came in handy. <laughs> How's that not a secret door? Oh. Oh, you have to... Uh, I think there may be a lever. There's a lever right there, right next to me. Literally right in front of me. Giant cell key. Oh, that's the cell where... Yeah, there it is. There's the mimic. Hello. <laughs> a symbol of avarice and an enchanted falchion. Monster head resembling a treasure chest. Once an ancient god, it is said that it is the symbol of shame imposed on a long-lost clan exiled for the sin of avarice. Wearing this slightly increases race's soul absorption and item discovery, but also affects its wearer with the curse of the branded. That sounds like a thing I'm not going to put on my head. Oh! I thought for sure, like, a bookcase was going to move or something. Well. The last time we went through a fog door in here, we died. Because there was a great big dragon hanging out. I don't think I have enough souls to level up, actually. But it's worth going back to have a look, because I'm probably about to lose them. And we open up that nice shiny new shortcut for ourselves. Be a shame not to use it. Oh, that was a new bonfire. I thought I found it already. Yeah, not quite enough to level up. Okay. I'm kind of tempted to grind a little bit just to spend the souls on a level up instead of losing them to whatever is going to be killing me behind that door. Okay, I've got 40 strength, which means I'm probably done with that. So the only other things to put points into, like if I... If I want to go with a sword still, then dexterity is probably not the worst thing to invest in, because I like the Zweihander, I like the great sword, and they do scale a little bit on dex. Okay, so two things to do now. 
There's the fog door, which leads to a boss, but then there's the big key we got that would let us free the wizard Logan guy. Okay. And then it's this way. And then we can go down to the cage. And then we can save the guy. And he'll be happy and grateful. Probably. I don't know. Last time we saved him, he was just kind of a dick to us. <laughs> He's just like, oh, I teach you some magic, but you're too stupid, so... Uh, made it. Um... That's, uh... They're all back. Oh, hello. But hopefully, since the music has stopped, they're not going to be hostile anymore. Nope. They're definitely hostile. So now I have to kill all of these things again, but they won't leave the room, so... <laughs> okay, I can one-hit... I can one-shot them. I can one-shot them. That's something. I feel bad about this, though. Like, they're not that hostile. They're just like, get out of our room, Dad. You promised you wouldn't look. I'm sorry about this, but I really need to get to the... prison dude. So there's some humanity left in her, huh? In both of them. Take it, they weren't supposed to end up like this. <sighs> oh, thank you very much. I'm safe. That makes twice. I must be sure to repay you. I will visit the archives. If I discover any new spells, I shall share them with you. Prepare to be impressed by the onward march of sorcery. Okay. Why were you here? I guess you got captured too. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Well, I mean, I'm sorry for what happened to you. That sucks. Bad place to die. Anyway, thanks for the soul. I'll be sure to use that to get better uh, orange juice. I don't know if I want to leave them alive or end the suffering. Uh, well, okay. I'm, uh... I'm sorry about this. Ugh. Miracle soothing sunlight. Miracle bountiful sunlight. Well, that certainly implies that they were human. Specifically that they were clerics of some kind. But yeah. Seath has a lot to answer for. So I wonder if the firekeeper is part of that story. Like, so we have a corpse of a firekeeper inside the cell, and then we have these clerics weeping, transformed, turned monstrous, outside the cell. And I can't help but wonder if that's the story that's going on there. That, that's the firekeeper's entourage, or her friends, or something along those lines. Special miracle granted to the maidens of Guinevere, princess of the sun. Restore high HP for self and vicinity. The miracles of Gwynewir, the princess blessed, cherished by all, grant their blessings to a great many warriors. So these are the... The maidens of Guinevere. Wait, if those two were the maidens of Gwynewir, is the firekeeper soul we just picked up? Well, she was then... Okay, so she, so the Firekeeper must also have been a Maiden of Gwynewir. It's a little, because, like, this place is still part of An Orlando, right? Like, Gwynewir is, like, right over there. It's a little bit... That Seath was just kind of torturing and murdering her Maidens? Probably kind of important. Characters. Hmm. See, because my initial impulse was that... If those were the Maidens of Gwynewir then the Firekeeper might be Guinevere, but we have big... Like, the Guinevere is somewhat bigger than that Firekeeper, though. So... I'm not sure how to reconcile that. Okay. Whatever is in here, let's just die to it. Get it over with. And... 
Oh. Is this place full of golems? Oh, oh yes, it is. Try crystal. Crystal cave, huh? Be wary of sliding down. Yeah. Okay, so I get the distinct feeling that it's possible to fall down in a lot of interesting ways down here. Very careful. Oh. Is that... Is that a butterfly? Not a moonlight butterfly, I take it, but... Oh, it's like a lot of them. Why are there many of them? Hidden path ahead. Is there, though? I mean, I guess the game is signaling it pretty hard with... <laughs> I'm gonna regret this. Oh. Well, okay. Can I avoid disturbing them, maybe? Can I just, like... Can we just leave each other alone forever? God, this is pretty, though. Okay, this again. Hidden path. There's another secret path. <laughs> this feels so wrong. I have died so many times. Falling off of things. Okay. Thank you, other players, for being not bad to me. That's another one of the big guys, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like I can make you fall down or something, can I? By any chance? No, I can't! Oh, fine time for you to lag, Dark Souls. Thank you. Can I just run past them? Like, is it an option just to... Ignore them? Oh! No, no, that was... That was... Okay. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Okay. Okay. Hi, Crystals. How are you doing? I hate you so much. I hate you so deeply and with so much passion in my soul. I can't stagger him. Might as well just... Oh, I can stagger him. I can stagger him. I staggered him. He's dead. He's gonna die. Thank you. <laughs> Path. Okay. Here. Ah. Well, if Seath is here, last time I fought Seath, he had curse. So... I'll just put the paladin armor on, I guess. Yeah, curse is ahead. Okay. Oh, what are you? What are you? What are you? It's a mollusk? Oh, oh, God, that's gross. Oh, that's a gross creature design. That's gross and I don't like it. Ew. Please don't explode or something. Yeah, you've got skulls inside of you. Because you have killed people. Okay, I get it. Purging stone. Nice. Wait, purging stone is the... It's the one that cures curses, right? Yes! Okay, good. I should equip that. Oh, I am very... Very scared of everything. I am scared of all the things. And I hate every single one of you. Okay, so that seems a lot like a boss fight is going to be happening there. Be wary of crystal. Try tail. Right, so it's Seath, then. I don't know what that is, but I want it! Yes, hello, Dragon Ball. Oh, didn't you used to be, like, all fleshy and scaleless? I guess I know what he's using the crystals for now. Okay. 
So you're big. That's fine. We've dealt with big before. Okay. Okay. So the tails I have to imagine can do damage. Maybe. I certainly can't do damage to them. Oi! Did I not take any damage from that? Yeah, there we go. There's the tail damage. Okay. So... Okay, so he shoots a little closer to himself as well. Oh, there's the curse. There's the curse buildup. Let's have that not happen to us. God, my frame rate, man. Oh, I think of a paladin armor is saving my ass right now. Are we gonna kill him in the first go? Really? Really? Surely not. Really? Really? Okay. That was... I mean, I, I do decent damage with this sword, but... Okay, well, I had no time to stand around and be surprised by it. Uh, so... That's a lord. That's... Okay, let's look at his soul. I'm still kind of stumped by this. Um, let's, he had a thing. Where is the key? There. Bequeathed Lord Soul Shard. Soul of the albino seat the scale is a fragment of a lord soul discovered at the dawn of the Age of Fire. Seath allied with Lord Gwyn and turned upon the dragons, and for this he was awarded dukedom, embraced by the royalty and giving a fragment of a great soul. Although just a piece, it will still satiate the lord vessel. Well, this is what we talked about last time when we killed Grave Lord Nito. Is <clears throat> I theorized then that it was gonna be a bit of a theme with the Lord Souls that you're not quite gonna get like the real Lord Souls or something. You're gonna, you're gonna get like some Lord Souls that are kind of halfway spent as with Nitos that has had already had a lot of its energy drained. And then the Seaths, which is only a fragment of a Lord Soul, not an actual Lord Soul in full. And I wonder if that's gonna be continuing with the other bosses because like that's been a, that's been a major theme of Dark Souls so far is that you are going through some very imperfect motions. Like you are, you're not you're recreating the Age of Fire, sure, but the world is all worn down. It's all it's burned out, literally burned out. There isn't really enough power to go around to power the to power the Age of Fire, or to move yourself forward uh, to to move the world forward into a a, a better version of itself you can kind of you can sort of restart it by using these imperfect fragments of lord souls but then you know, the one you're gonna get the, the age of fire you're gonna start is never gonna be as great as the one that you're trying to get back to it's never gonna be as, as great as the one where lord Gwyn ruled as king over a glorious kingdom blah 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 blah, blah all that stuff it's always gonna be a little bit imperfect there's always gonna be all kinds of compromises to that perfect vision that the world is longing to return to that's my theory at the moment, anyway. So what's this thing? Like, there was a glowing thing. And then... Here. Here. Which I guess was an important glowing thing. 
But it's broken. I guess it broke when Seath died. Well, okay then. Uh, I don't think there's much more to do in the Duke's archives, so let's head on back to Firelink Shrine for the moment, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the character design of Seath as I remember him. Like, I didn't get to spend that much time with him, let's be honest, so we'll do our best. So, hello, Firelink Shrine. So that was Seath the Scaleless. Not so scaleless anymore. So what we know of him is that he's someone, like, he was someone who took a great pleasure in experimenting with, I guess, magic? As symbolized by the fact that he resides at the bottom of a grand library in which he has a prison where he keeps all kinds of uh, victims of his experiments. And then there's the whole foreshadowing all the way through the archives with Crystal appearing more and more and more in the environment and on the enemies. Indeed, like, you've got Crystal uh, Hollows that are sort of crystallized. You've got Crystal Golems. You've got Crystal everything. And they all, um, like, they all kind of presage what Seath is going to have turned out to be, is that Seath, apparently in an attempt to, because I remember him from the intro cinematic where he was all raw and red and kind of slimy and blah, and didn't have any scales. So it seems that he's been trying to give himself scales, like it's been trying to, um, like he's been trying to get himself a coat of armor like the dragons of old hat. Like he's been trying to make himself less vulnerable. Or, of course, it could be his magical experimentation has gone wrong, and what we're seeing here is essentially zombie Seath, who has kind of corrupted himself. We didn't really get a sense of whether there was a mind at work with him, because he had, didn't have any dialogue, didn't really show any human characteristics, he just kind of showed up and attacked. Um, but on the other hand, when he attacked us in the Duke's archives, he, uh, he did, like, imprison us after killing us. Like, he imprisoned us somewhere, so there is, like, a, a mind, um, going on down there right now, in, inside of him. Framped is asleep. Okay. Let's go and put the soul in the Lord Vessel, and then we'll send it over to Future Sky, who will be, uh, taking care of the post-game of <laughs> this particular unusually easy boss fight. Well, thank you very much, Paskine, and not to rain on my parade, but unfortunately, as it turns out, we defeated Seath a little bit by accident. See, the glowing stick thing that comes out of the ground is actually a beacon of some sorts that projects some kind of invulnerability force field onto Seath or something along those lines, I'm not really sure. But it turns out, like, in order to beat Seath, first you have to figure out that that thing is making him invulnerable, and then you have to break that thing, and then you can actually fight the dragon. And now our fight, for whatever reason, it turns out Seath broke it for us. I think maybe when he was doing some tail slapping or something along those lines, he broke it for us, and then we could just go and hit him in the face with a Zweihinder, and then he was dead. But yeah, theoretically, the fight could have gone very differently, been a lot longer, and I could have died a lot more times, if not for complete random chance. So, with my elite gamer skills thoroughly undercut, what is Seath himself actually like? Now, we're first introduced to Seath in the intro cinematic, where we're told that Seath the Scaleless betrays the dragons to Lord Gwyn and helps, you know, bring about the Age of Fire in return for... Well, we don't really know. Elsewhere in the lore, we are told that Seath is given a, I think he's made a duke or something along those lines, and he becomes beloved in the circles of the grand nobles that rule Lord Ran, but, well, the Duke's archives do give us some deeper hints as to his real motivations. First with the Moonlight Butterfly, and then throughout the entirety of the Duke's archives, we run into what seems to be Seath's creations, and while certainly his penchant for creating life and engineering it to his purposes suggests that he is somewhat megalomaniacal, that he considers himself a sort of deity, a sort of god who can play with life as he sees fit, this, combined with his clear desperation to hoard knowledge, suggests that he is not merely playing god when he creates these poor, unfortunate creatures, but he is researching something. He's looking for some kind of, well, I hesitate to say scientific, but at least magical breakthrough that will give him something that he doesn't have but which he desperately wants. So, the first creature that we encounter in the Duke's archive, or the first creatures, I should say, is a couple of boars completely encased in armor. 
Then we make our way up and we encounter hollows that are almost completely covered in crystal that seems to grow on them, almost like an infection, but which also makes them both a lot harder to damage and makes them deal a lot more damage in turn. The crystals are taking them over, but they're clearly also empowering them. Something which is further confirmed when we actually find some crystal weapons and see that they have significantly boosted stats at the cost of a much lower durability. Finally, we make our way up the elevator until we come to a tight corridor, almost completely overgrown with crystal, in which we encounter a human, or at least so it seems a human-like person covered in crystal and seemingly possessed by them. The passage gets narrower and narrower, and the crystals increase in intensity until finally we come to the fog door and enter Seath's chamber. Except it's not a chamber. In fact, it barely looks like it's even part of the Duke's archives at all. It is more like a cocoon of crystals. Crystal on the walls, crystal on the floors, crystal being thrown at us from every direction by Seath himself. There's no hint of the books or the man-made structures that have dominated our journey to Seath so far. There's only the complete transformation of not only Seath, but his environment into the crystal that he desires. And then he kills us. Now, I'm reasonably convinced that that fight is supposed to be impossible to win, but I'm also entirely convinced that some lunatic speedrunner, and probably just a bunch of hardcore players, have found a way to win the fight anyway. I have no idea what would happen if you do win the fight. But as we lose it, Seath finds some way to subvert the power of the Dark Sign, and instead of returning to the last bonfire we rested at, we are taken to the depths of the Duke's archives. And here we get a proper sense of both the scale of Seath's desperate hoarding of knowledge and indeed the depths of the depravity that he has sunk into in order to forge for himself a crystal armor. Because that, of course, is what Seath is actually after. He is Seath the scale less, and he's seeking to remedy that deficiency. This is why the armored boars guarding the archives at the beginning. This is why all the experimentation on fusing magical creatures together. This is why all the crystals and the crystal infections. This is why he has staffed his archive with a huge squad of channelers, sorcerers using sorcerer's magic. But most tellingly of all, perhaps, is that the creatures that are guarding Seath's chamber itself are clams, creatures which are a literal metaphor for shutting yourself up inside a shell to protect yourself from the world around you. When Seath is presented to us in the intro cinematic, he is this raw, fleshy, glistening, and bleeding creature screaming on top of a pile of corpses. And I don't necessarily get the sense that that was a scream of victory. When we encounter him for the first time in the game at the top of the Duke's archive, he's contained within a cocoon or almost a womb of crystal in which he seems to have been forging a new skin for himself. And when we encounter him for the second time, we are not only in a womb of crystal, but a world of crystal. And at that world's beating, glowing heart, insofar as I can make out, that is where Seath has chosen to live. Not only covered in the new crystal skin that seems to have grown over the entirety of his body, but contained within a world of crystal, armor upon shell upon armor surrounding him and protecting him. This, I suppose, is why he betrayed the dragons. He was vulnerable, and he was blind, and he was frightened in a world where every other dragon has a stone skin to protect them. He alone was exposed. So, looking for safety, one supposes looking for protection, he sold the dragons out to Gwyn and set about crafting for himself a imitation of the protections that his former species had. So, what about the character design of the creature itself? Well, Seath is like, first and foremost, he's a dragon, and he is a dragon sans the stone skin that characterizes the rest of his compatriots in the intro cinematic, but otherwise he's physically fairly similar to them. This is dragons in the western style, that is to say, giant lizards with horns and wings. The major twist about Seath's design, however, is instead of being modeled after lizards that might live on the surface, he looks like something that crawled out of a deep and very dark cave. Now, albinism is a real condition that affects plenty of living creatures, including humans, so be very careful about exactly what we say here, but generally in the cultural history of the world, being some flavor of divergent, whether it is seen as a crippling disability or some sort of mark of a curse, or a golden gift from the god that blesses people with certain spiritual insights, albinism is always associated with being an other, an outsider. 
Now, for real people with albinism living in real life, this kind of thing has resulted in all kinds of persecutions, both in the ancient times and modern day. Everything from medical malpractice to being denied job opportunities and indeed just being ostracized, harassed, and treated like a monster. And again, this is not just limited to the bad old days when everyone was silly and stupid. This stuff still happens to people today. So I'm being a little bit careful here when I say that Seath's albinism in terms of his character design is being used as a marker to designate him as an other, as an outsider from his own species, as a deviant, as it were. It is also being used to tie him to the supernatural and the magical and the non-physical as opposed to the physical realm. Weiss is often used as a symbol of purity, but also as a symbol of death. For example, in the West, we would associate the color white with funeral shrouds and ghosts, and I know that in Japan, white is also considered both a r religious color that symbolizes purity and knowledge, but also very much the color of death and mourning. So Seath is to his dragon compatriots as a blind cave salamander might be to a crocodile. He is as a ghost is to the living. He's blind where they can see. He's vulnerable where they are protected. He is in every single possible way an other. And an other who is foreign from the natural world that most people would know and understand. He comes from a different realm. Whether that is a deep cave or the spirit realm doesn't really matter. He is coded outsider. And so his alliance with Gwyn and acceptance into Lordra and High Society and his title and his fancy mansion is cast into a somewhat more tragic light. An outsider, an outcast, an other, someone who does not belong with his own species, his own people. Being offered a chance to not only be a valuable ally, but to be fated, to be celebrated, to be wanted, to be given all the resources you could ever possibly want as you pursue a means to find yourself a suit of armor that will keep you safe. None of which, of course, excuses the things that Seath has done, the abuses that he has inflicted on the prisoners in his archive, but it might go some way towards explaining what pathology might drive a mind to become so monstrous. Now again, here at the end I want to emphasize that there is a hashtag problematic aspect in associating a character with disabilities with being monstrous and evil. Seath is blind and an albino and therefore he betrays his people and turns other people around him into monsters because he is evil to his core. On its own, it's of course just one way to characterize a character to externalize their monsterhood, which is a typical character design trick, but in the context of a very long history of media that demonizes especially albinos, but also just, you know, people with disabilities, just, it's good to be conscious of the history of that. None of it means Seath is a bad character design, but you have to keep that stuff in mind when you're making a critical appraisal of what the character design is telling you and how it's telling you those things. Ah, and that's another episode of The Boss Designs of Dark Souls. As usual, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon, all of those things are good, because YouTube wants numbers, and as long as the numbers are going up, I get to keep doing this for a job. Maybe. Now, The Boss Designs of Dark Souls is perhaps my most work-intensive series on the channel, and it never gets nearly as many views as my somewhat more easily produced content. So, if you would like to help support this series more directly, well, Patreon is an option for that. You can sign up for a subscription at any level that you'd like. A dollar is certainly extremely helpful. You can also, if you don't want to do a recurring subscription thing, you can give me a one-time tip uh, with some of the tip jars down below, where you can say, hey, good job making a video where you die in Dark Souls and talk about why the bosses are very sad guy. As I say at the end of my videos, one dollar can mean the same as thousands of views to a YouTube creator or tens of thousands to a online content creator of any kind. So whether it's me or it's someone else, if you have online content creators whose work you love, consider supporting them directly with even a very small amount of money. It makes a much bigger difference than you think. Now, if you can't do that or you just don't want to, trust me, I get it. Money is tight all over and nobody knows that better than online content creators. So I'd just like to thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't enjoyed this video, of course, there's a dislike button down below. Of course, like everywhere else on YouTube, the dislike button is a repository for damned souls imprisoned for all eternity to make penance for their sins. Every click takes a tenth of a second to you, but it is 10,000 years of torment for the damned souls contained therein. Uh, the ones contained in my particular dislike button are imprisoned for, uh, hang on, let me see, uh, oh! 
asking online artists to draw them things and offering to pay them an exposure. Well, I guess there's a lesson in that. <laughs>